What does it mean to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul? I think as humans, we were created to honor God and to worship God and to live a life that honors Him in everything we do. To me, it is, uh, it is just like to wake up every day, choosing to obey Him, to trust Him, and to follow Him regardless of the situations. It's just continuously trusting and surrendering every aspect of my life to God and knowing that He is a loving and faithful God that He is. Sacrificing everything that I want daily. It's like a daily, you know, dying to myself. It's summative about giving everything up to love God. It's, it's giving up um, everything that you have, everything that you are, uh, for, the, for the benefit of God and His kingdom. Whatever life throws at you, I will still praise Him and love Him because He's in control. Sometimes it's really hard to love God. Sometimes you're in um, that space where there's a lot of tension and apprehension. And I, I've learned that it's okay to be angry with God and to um, kind of wrestle with God. But in doing so, like that strength to be resilient, to say, hey, I'm really angry at you right now, but I'm still gonna persist, and I'm still gonna move forward, and I'm still gonna love you even though it hurts. Believing him, believing what he's said, believing what he's declared. By learning and going deeper with his word. Giving up my pride, giving up the things that I think I already know, giving up my time, um, my resources, whatever it may be. And letting his truth trump every lie that you carried about him and about yourself and about the world and, and, and letting that go, releasing that and surrendering that and clinging on to his truth and continuing to renew your mind in his truth until you believe him. Loving God with all your heart, mind and soul means giving yourself away. You would do what Jesus did really throwing my heart over the line and saying, Jesus, you know, this is all of me. You can have all of me and really uh, not holding anything back, but really just giving him every single part of me. Like everything that you do, anything that has anything to do with thought or thinking or moving or doing is literally loving God. Like just loving him with every bit of your being. Everything I have and everything I've been giving is from Him, so everything that I do is a representation of Him in my life. And so that's reflected upon just not just in ministry, but my everyday walk. So what I do, where I go, is just who I am. It should show in how you live. Um, I think actions obviously speak louder than words. You know, we can say every day, like, you know, we love Jesus and, you know, He's our everything, but if that's not, if we're not making that a point in our life, we're not putting that first in our life, it's going to show. But really just saying, you know, God, like you're first and foremost and whatever you want, I'm going to do. You want to be consumed by godly things. And that means in everything that you do, that you believe that you're walking in God's purpose and that you're moving by His Spirit. Really just to be fully vested into the process, to what God wants to do in me, through me, with me. Really de daily devote myself to the Lord. Every minute, every second, every millisecond, and wanting to, Him to just enter my life and just tear it up in a sense. And um, be able to give up my will and um, serve His will. One of the things uh, that I learned through the classes that I've taken here at Pac Rim is kind of a th the way the great commandments move from one to the next. In other words, the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, mind. That moves into the next one, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. Because to me, if you don't seek to love God with everything you have, it's difficult, if not impossible, to love your neighbor as yourself because you don't, you don't understand what that means. Every relationship that I have holds God's purpose, not just the easy relationships, the tough ones too. It means that everything I do, I want to do in service to God and in service to the people who God loves, and God loves everyone. Learning to have that um, special relationship with God foremost and above everything else 
And it's um, through those relationships with God that we build other relationships around us to love our neighbors and to serve one another. And it's like basically love God and love people and then just show whatever He's doing in our lives to the rest of the world without um, judgment or without any reservation, just loving people and worshiping God through our actions more than just our words. I appreciate that Pacram cares about what God is doing in our minds and our hearts and through our hands. It amazed me on how intentional the teachers were in through pouring into their students. There's like a lot of teachers that really live the scriptures and they transfer that knowledge and their passion for God into our lives as students, so that's really impactful. And how when it was hard for them, they would still come, they would still be willing and eager to pour out and give us what they had. But really learning how to live a lifestyle of worship and see it acted out in uh, my teachers and my peers and how we encourage one another to do that is just been very helpful and very encouraging when it's difficult to do. Just as tithing is a worship to God in our hearts letting go of the things that we think we have possession over, um, worship also looks like giving our time. Worship looks like giving our knowledge and um, intentionally pouring into people. And I think that that generally allows you to not just learn, but to understand. And the understanding comes from the interchange and the uh, conversation that you have with your fellow students and also with a professor. What I thought about Peck Group first was I thought it was just, you know, a Bible college where I learn more about um, God's Word and uh, be equipped to do ministry after. But uh, once I came to Peck Group, uh, God totally just blew my expectations in the sense that I wouldn't think I'd be able to um, question the things that I believed as well as um, be able to uh, share and talk about topics that are not so easily uh, covered within church in a sense. Yeah, it's just that safe environment where you can wrestle with your, your thoughts, your beliefs. I think part of the process of renewing the mind is met or is satisfied with uh, a willing and serious study of the Bible. You have to understand them and when you understand the Word and understand God, it just increases your relationship with Him and you uh, are so much more able to live that out in your day-to-day -day life. In retrospect, uh, I enrolled in Packram to gain a, gain a deeper technical understanding of the Bible. I'm graduating with a deeper understanding of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. I think Packram has taught me one way to love other people, and in the process, I've learned to be, um, I've learned to love people in a different way. Um, to be authentic, to be transparent, um, but also to be present in the moment, um, to listen and not just, you know, hear things. It helped me to see outside of myself and outside of even the church. Just being challenged to ask the hard questions about the world around me and just the difficulties and challenges I face um, in the community that I, that I see and the world that I live in. And what does that mean um, as a Christian or in the eyes of God? And to love them with everything, not just those that I want to like, but to love those that I can't, you know, that in my own power I would never be able to.